All right, so here's the second question, FRQ2 from the 2023 AP Physics 1 uh, exam. This is the released uh, FRQ. If you have a different one, then it's not being released. Um, there's no solutions out there, so these are my best guess of the solutions. If I have any mistakes, I will put as a pinned comment in, in below. Okay, so students conduct an experiment to determine the acceleration of cart A. The cart is released from rest, so I always like to write V equals zero when it's from rest, at the top of the ramp and moves down the ramp. The x-axis is defined to be parallel to the ramp with its origin at the top, so they're giving you the axis direction there. The students collect the data in the following figure. Position versus time. Indicate which quantity should be graphed to yield a straight line whose slope could be used to determine the acceleration of the cart. You may use the remaining columns in the table as necessary to record quantities. Okay, so we have position versus time. If you're thinking position versus time, we gotta be thinking kinematics. So what's the process for kinematics is you're thinking, okay, what's the displacement? We'll call that the position. We'll just, that's x equals zero. What's the initial velocity? Zero at rest. What's the final velocity? I don't know. What's the acceleration? I would like to know that. And the time is a variable that's given. So then what equation relates those four variables is going to be this kinematic equation. So you would have x is equal to zero t plus one half a t squared. So it's x equals 1 half at squared. And if you want something that's going to be a straight line, you always want to think about it as like y equals mx. So this is going to be my y variable. And let's just make the 1 half t squared. That will be x. And therefore, a is my m. So I'm going to, you know, you don't have to use the 1 half in there. But I like to do that um, just so the slope directly is going to be my 9.8 meters per second squared. So the vertical axis is going to be the position. And the horizontal axis, I'm going to do 1 half t squared. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do. And the slope will give me the acceleration. Okay, Now, if you did t squared, then your slope would be 1 half a. But you probably have to have something with t squared. You could square root this too. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways you could do it. But as long as it's something like that, it's fine. On the grid, plot the appropriate quantities to create a graph that could be used, blah, blah, blah. Okay, including units. You got to label the graphs. You got to label the units. Be careful on that one. So let's first, I have to compute 1 half t squared for all of these real quick. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.39 squared is 0 0.07605. 0 0.5 times 0 0.59 squared is 0 0.174. 0 0.5 times 0 0.77 squared is 0.296. 0.5 times 0.96 squared, and then that's going to be 0.46, and then 0.5 times 1.2 squared is going to be 0.72, okay? So in the interest of making it easier so I don't have to scroll back and forth, I'm going to go ahead and um, put these things down, and I'm going to just, first let's label our axes. This is going to be 1 half t squared, and we've got to put the units, that's second squared. The vertical axis is going to be position, which is in meters. And now we've got to look at the y values. I'm going to about 0.55. So what if we make each of these like point, um, 1, 2, 3, so point, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Yeah, that would be good. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6. Okay. And then in the x axis, I want to go from a 0 to about 0 0.7. So we'll make this point, I don't know, 2, 4, 6, 8. No. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll make this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Okay, so that will cover everything. And each of these will be about 0 0.02 or 0 0.025. Okay, so let's put the dots in here. So we're going to put point, so the x axis 0 0.076. Okay, so this is 0 0.05, 0 0.076 about here, and then 0 0.06. Each of these is about one, two, three. It's about 0.2. So two, four, six, about 0.6 right there. Then on the x axis, 0.174. So this is about 1, 5, 1, 7, 5 is about there. And then 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 0 0.14, about there. Then 0 0.296, we'll just call that 0.3. And then uh, 0 0.24, 0 0.22, 24. So it should look like a straight line if you did this correctly. 0.4. Let's see, 2, 5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 is probably there, and then 0 0.37, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 3, 8, 3, 7 is going to be right about there. So put it right about there. And then finally, 0 0.72, uh, this is 7, 2, 5, so 7, 2 is pretty close to this, and then 0 0.55, 0 0.5, 2, 4, 6, so 0 0.55, and maybe slightly to the left right there. Okay, so good enough. 
Now, uh, this is gonna be a straight line. I'm gonna go ahead and start it at the origin because I know like, you know, it should be, but as long as you pick a line that's like pretty good, that goes through those points, it doesn't have to go through them. I might actually make it a little flatter. I mean, you should use a straight edge. It doesn't really matter like how precise you are in this point. Um, but I might do something like that. Okay, good enough. Now you wanna pick two points on this. Okay, so use calculate the experiment of value for the acceleration of the car as it rolled down the ramp. So we just wanna pick two points that are sort of easy to read. So I'm gonna pick like this point right here. And I like them, point, I like them far apart, by the way. And this is 0 0.5246, 0 0.56. And then maybe another point, um, uh, we'll, pick, uh, we'll pick this one right here. It's close enough. So that's 0 0.1 comma 0 0.08. Two, four, six, eight, yeah, point zero eight. So then my A is approximately equal to the slope, or it's equal to the slope, which is approximately equal to 0 0.56 minus 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.56 minus 0 0.08. Like, obviously, your specific number will be specific to um, how you... Um, how you actually uh, calculated this thing. Okay, so don't be like 0 0.8 meters per second. That's really slow. I just wanna double check that it traveled half a meter in one second. Okay, yeah, it's not that fast. Okay, I think that's fine. Okay, students are asked to determine the experimental value of gravity using there. What additional quantities do you need to measure to calculate gx from the A? Well, you should know that the acceleration is g sine theta, right? And you can do that from a free body diagram. <clears throat> so here you have a cart, right? So um, you have mg, you have normal force. And if you decompose our forces, right? This is mg cosine theta. And this is for inclined plane, this is mg sine theta. So I know that the net force down the ramp is mg sine theta that would equal MA, mass times the acceleration, mass cancels, so the acceleration is G sine theta. So I have A, I would need to know the angle of the ramp. Angle of the ramp. Write an expression in terms of, did they give us theta or anything like that? Um, they did not tell you. You could also face it based on the height of the ramp, I guess. Um, you could think of it that way, but I would just probably do this. So I would say G experimental would be A over sine theta, and they just want it in terms of A. So I think that would be fine. Had you done something like, uh, you know, you could have also done like calculate the height or something like that, and then equivalently found that. I mean, there's a lot of ways you probably could, could, could sort that out, but that's probably what I would do for that one. Students calculate the value of GX uh, experimental to be significantly lower than the accepted value of 9.8 meters per second squared. What is a physical reason other than friction or air resistance that could lead to significant difference in the experimentally determined value of, um, of this? Uh, other than friction or air resistance. So no other forces that could lead to, let me see. Well, um, what did we measure? Well, they're saying except for friction. So other than friction, what I was gonna say is that mm, some energy in the wheels, but let me think about what could, what could be so significant. Okay, so let's, let's kind of break this down, right? If you are gonna have a very small value of this, that means the acceleration was very slow. So if the acceleration was very slow, that means either you measure the time properly or, okay, so you could have improperly measured the angle Okay, that's one way, like the angle is like really off. So the angle is bigger than you thought or something like that. Um, that's not a really good physical reason, but I mean, that's like one thing you could maybe argue about it. What else would make this thing really small uh, from this calculation? The acceleration is very small and that could be because of the position or the time part. And that would be, um, again, the time is taking longer or the position is taking longer. Let me let me take a second to think about this one real quick. Yeah, I mean, if you're not gonna use air resistance or friction, there's two basically things. There has to be some other external force that's slowing the cart down, okay? So it could be like, um, it could be some some friction with the wheels or something like that. There's like a, in, 
I don't know. There's just something, some other external force that's going to slow down the cart. It's kind of weird because there's wheels there and they're rolling, so there should be some friction, right, to cause that 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 rotation, which is a little bit like kind of strange that we can't use friction as an argument because the friction is definitely there. Um, so like there's static friction that's going to cause the wheels to rotate unless it's just like it's sliding down without friction. That would be one thing. Um, so I'm 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 kind of hard to like hard press to say i would say if i went with an answer i would just say like the angle has to be mismeasured right so we're we're we're, we're physically measuring the theta incorrectly or you have to say there's some other external force that's like slowing it down it's not just accelerating due to gravity so you'd have to say there's some other external force that's slowing the block down so i would say that those are two possibilities i would say the theta is is um less steep than measured. Okay, I think either of these would be acceptable as long as you, you, you clarified how that worked. Or, or there's some external force acting on the cart. All right? And why, how would this affect it? Well, if the, if the, um, if sine of theta is, let me see, let's think about it. If sine of theta is bigger than it would be, so, okay, uh, actually is is steeper than measured. I, I should say it this way, steeper than measured. Because if it was actually steeper, then the theta you pick in is too big, in which case you're going to use too big on the denominator. So if I use the theta one, it says, well, if theta is too big, is larger uh, than actual, uh, if measured theta, then a over sine theta is going to be sm is will be smaller because you're basically saying the denominator is bigger than you expected it to be. That's why you're going to like um, this is significantly lower. I don't really like theta because it's significantly lower. If you use external force, you have to say that there's an external force acting up the cart. And that would that would reduce the acceleration, and by reducing the acceleration, the g x, the experimental value of g would be too small. Something along those lines that's consistent. There's probably other reasons that I'm not thinking of that you got, but as long as it's reasonable based on the setup of what might be happening, then I think you'll get credit as long as you can connect the idea somehow. Students want to confirm that the acceleration is the same whether the car rolls up or down the ramp. The students start the car at the bottom, give it a quick push so it rolls up the ramp, and momentarily comes to rest. The x-axis is still defined to be parallel to the ramp of the origin at the top. On the following graph, sketch the position and velocity as a function of time that corresponds to the scenario while the cart moves up the ramp. So his position is going to be like over here. And if he's subject to acceleration, the position is going to be quadratic. And so he's going to be, let's see, momentarily comes to rest, but not necessarily at the, at the very top. So at some point, it'll like come to a rest, and then his position will then go more positive. So I would make it a parabola that looks kind of like this, maybe. And then the velocity is going to be the slopes of this guy. Now, why is it a parabola? It's because um, it's 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 kind of like the the it's, it's this relationship, right? It's like one half at squared. It's quadratic, right? And so you're going to start at some position, and then you're going to move down. This is where you would be at the very top, and then come back down. So the velocity is going to start off with some initial velocity going up the ramp, which is going to be negative. Okay, so a negative velocity here, and then it's gonna have zero velocity, and then it's gonna, and then why should the slope of this be positive? Because the slope of this guy, right, equals the acceleration. Which way is the acceleration? Acceleration is down the ramp. The accel that's the positive direction, so I want a positive slope. So this here would correspond to this part here. Like I might, if you wanna say like A, that's A, that's A. It's just like where it momentarily comes to rest there, if you wanted to align that. Um, do we need to describe anything about the graph? No, that's it. Okay, and that's the second one.